In this video, I'm going to show you how we messed up Applied Optical Electronics, and I'm also going to show you how we messed up Facebook. Now to be perfectly clear, I was trading Applied Optical Electronics in another account that I run that's a swing trading account. That's the account that I was using when I did this other video that showed how I was able to ride this up and exit right near the close of day right here uh, before, right before we had this massive, massive sell-off. And so the trade that I'm talking about here in this video is the one that we did for the model portfolio within the advanced stock report service. So in that account that, that I'm running, I'm just mirroring all the trades that Adam Sarhan gives out in the model portfolio for the advanced stock report service. And uh, based on taking all those trades for 2017, I was able to triple the S&P 500. And so I'm taking you on that journey. It's not always a very easy journey and there are some bumps in the road and this is one of them. So we entered on this day here with that little green arrow and on that day, on June 19th, we got in at $63.16. So the rationale for that trade was getting in on this descending trend line. It broke above that. We knew that Applied Opto Electronics was clearly a leader and wanted to participate in uh, this move here. So we got in there and the initial stop was set at $59.97. So right around where it was kind of forming support, right around here, a little bit below $60. So you have that psychological level of, of a round number. And so that that's where the, the stop was placed for that. And it gave us a pretty decent reward to risk ratio. Uh, we were only risking 5% on this trade. So trade goes along and then we're stopped out right here. At one point, uh, Adam raised the stop to $60.41. Uh, and so uh, we were stopped out right there and, uh, and that was it, end of trade. And we did not get back into this trade probably could have drawn another descending trend line like this that would have helped get us in for that move right there. That didn't happen. So well, what did I learn from this trade? Well, like ju just looking at this trade, it just looks like, well, that, that's just a real bad move. Uh, clearly, uh, you, you F this one up, right? So not... Yes and no. The, 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 that's what, what I, I'm saying for, for this trade. Yes and no. Yes, because well, we didn't get back in. And yes, because the stop, uh, the stop placement wasn't as exactly where it should be, right? Well, like, so I think that looking back on this, the stop should have been placed down here at 50, below 57.55, so probably about 57.50, maybe 57.45, uh, if you wanted to kind of get cute with the, the numbers there, and that would have given you a stop below the recent low uh, on that reversal, kind of tested over here as well. Um, and then you also have the 50-day moving average, and you would not have been shaken out over here or over there, the low of this day was $58 and you would have enjoyed that full uptrend. So why why wasn't the stop placed there? Well, I did some calculating and if we put the stop down here, then it would have been an 8.8% uh, risk on that particular trade. And so you know, as the stop kind of starts to get lower and lower and lower, then the reward to risk ratio ends up getting skewed and it's just not worth taking the trade. Adam knew at the time that Applied Optical Electronics was one that once it gets going is a stock that will get going and get going in a, in a big bad way. We saw that obviously here, but uh, the idea ended up 
not working out uh, and the trade was wrong. I don't think that his rationale was wrong per se. Um, it was trying to, to be a little bit, maybe a little bit too cute on the trade, looking back on it, you know, well, like, uh, everything is clear in 2020, well, when, well, when we're looking backwards, but, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that I could completely fault him for this trade, for wanting to take the trade, participate in the upside, and give a much better reward to risk, and you could make the argument that that's, uh, an okay place for uh, for a stop loss, not the best, but uh, but not terrible either. And if this trade did work out, nobody would be questioning it. So stop placement is is, is important. That, that's one of my bigger takeaways from all this. That uh, where where we're going to get out is twice as important uh, as where we're going to get in. Here's another one that was really messed up, uh, Facebook, right? And so if, if you're sitting there and then you have this service and, and you're brand new and you're just testing it out and you get these two trades back to back, it's like, what the, what in the hell did I sign up for, right? Well, like, hey, here's a professional and he's telling me to get in over here, got this stop loss, and then just another couple of days later or, or a week or so later, here it is off to the races and we're sitting well with a loss. So, yeah, that, that's... It. I can definitely see how if you are somebody that just tests something out like this for a month, and I would probably say that it's true for most services, especially when they are in the intermediate term nature. If you don't sit there and actually see how this stuff plays out, then it's going to be tough to be along for the ride for... Uh, 60% gain over the course of a year. That's not something that's easy to do, and it's especially not easy to do when you're sitting like this for a couple of weeks at a time, and it takes time to build these big winners. But anyway, let's dig into what happened here with Facebook, right? So we bought Facebook uh, right here, and we bought it at 152.41 and the initial stop was set down here at 148.27 so why was it bought on uh on that day right well you kind of have that descending trend line down to the 50-day moving average uh again and you get this uh little gap up over there so you're buying that and so, okay, you, uh, you're you in Facebook, it, it, bound, it clearly is getting support all along the 50-day moving average. Like, if we zoom out back here, a very strong support along the 21-day exponential moving average starts to, to run up, gets a little too hot over here, and then pulls back down into the 50-day moving average. Getting support, getting support, uh, then it tests it, falls below it, closes back above it, intraday so still getting very strong support at that 50-day moving average all right so bounces off of it there uh so that's the idea of rallying off the 50-day moving average that's the uh, that's the point of this conversation right so anyway moving along so we have the stop set over here at 148.27 which uh you know, I, I want to defend this stop placement, and it, it, it is right below this daily low right here, right? So uh, what's that low exactly? 148.60, you have a stop loss at 148.27. Okay, fine. So it, what this does is on this particular trade, you are only risking 2.7%. That, that is very, very attractive. And especially if you're using uh, a position sizing strategy where you back into the number of shares, uh, like well, what I've showed you in some of our other videos and how we have uh, that position size calculator on Chart Your Trade. I'll link it somewhere down in the description. But yeah, if you 
say that I want to enter at 152.41 and my initial stop is going to be at 148.27, then you could buy a lot more shares than if you had placed your stop down here below 146.37 or if you had placed your stop below here at 144.56. You're expanding your reward to risk ratio and it's very tempting to do this, but the downside is that while you potentially have a much bigger reward to risk, you, you could get stopped out at the wrong place, right? So what happens here, right? The, the stop gets moved up a little bit. We end up getting tagged right here, right? And, and we're out, we're, we're out of the trade on this day here, uh, just a few days later on uh, June 29th. And we, Facebook finally closed below the 50-day moving average over here on July 3rd. And the low of that day was 147.80, right? So we would have been stopped out on that day there regardless. So at least moving the stop up, you know, we didn't take a full loss on that trade. But had we placed our stop down here, or if we had placed our stop down there, uh, I did the calculation and doing it, placing the stop down here, we would have risked 3.9%. Placing the stop down here, we would have risked 5.15%. That's still pretty damn good in my opinion. And I think that I think that the reward to risk ratio on this one was honestly screwed up. I, I, I can't defend the, the, that, that argument uh, of keeping the stop that tight. Um, it, it's something that, yeah, looking in the rear view mirror, it's a little bit easier to see. But yeah, I think that's a, a big lesson learned to, to make sure that where you're going to place your stop, that it is at a very important level on the chart as well, because it's not just looking at a chart and, you know, like uh, looking at the stars and doing voodoo. It, like, this is where demand is showing up. And yeah, placing the stop right there, for instance, uh, you would have still been in this trade and would have made from, from this entry point until it started to consolidate again, you would have been up 15%. So with a, if you're risking 3.9% to make 15%, uh, you would have more than tripled the amount that you've risked, right? Now, and if you put your stop down here even, you would have just about tripled the amount that you've risked. So don't be greedy. I think that's the big lesson of this trade and to also make sure that wherever you're going to place your stops, that it makes sense on the chart and you want it to be a very clear level of support that has multiple things going for it. So I hope that you learned a lot from these couple of losses. I know that I have. If you have any questions on any of this at all, please leave it in the comment section below and I will personally help you. Also, if you like this video, do us a favor and click that thumbs up button. That'll really help us out a lot. And also make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that way you get every single update. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care and have a great day.